All right. The coverage matrix is an important ingredient of all these covering models. Okay. And to try to explain what I mean by a coverage matrix, I have drawn a small example here. Um, and you can pretty much uh, recognize some geographic units, right? Be census tract, maybe zip codes. Um, and those are in blue here, right? Those are the polygons. And for each of them, I have um, estimated or computed rather the, their century, the sort of center of gravity. And they go from 1 all the way to 13. Okay. Those are what I would call demand nodes, right? This is where population live, and of course this is aggregated at the central level, um, but that's the population that we will try to cover. Now, for the sake of the example, I have taken three facilities, A, B, and C, and those are denoted with a cross in red. And so one simple question in a special optimization may be if we could locate only one of these facilities, then where would it be? Okay. And one important uh, parameter here is how much can one facility cover? What is this sort of radius? What is this sort of coverage, right? And I'm going to draw those coverage just uh, so you can see what I, what I mean. All right, I want to keep the example relatively straightforward. So what I've done, right, is take a small piece of a rope, okay, I've attached a chalk at the end, okay, and there is a center. And that will sort of define what my radius is, right? And I will draw this around each of these facilities. So let's have a look. Facility A here, so I'm going to position there in the center, okay, and then I will draw the radius around it. So you can see. Okay. Of course, this is approximate, it's not perfect but good enough, okay? Facility B here, it's here, it's here. So it does not take 10, that's important, okay? It does not take six. And I'll stick to nine, okay? And then facility C here, And again, you know, the sort of radius outside is not that important, but so be. Okay, so now I have three facilities with their radiuses, okay? Um, <clears throat> the question will be which one of these three appears to be the most strategic and the one that could cover as many people as possible. Uh, again, remember these yellow dots represent demand nodes. Currently, each demand node here um, is basically one group of individuals but we don't make the distinction yet as how many people live there. We will do that later. All right. One thing I would like to point out before we move on into um, filling in this coverage matrix is those radiuses that I was talking about. You know, this in a geographic information system or GIS can easily be called using this function called buffer or um, you know, sort of this uh, query by location. So those are our uh, special query, those are pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm going to move here to what I would call this coverage matrix. And the idea is that for each of these facilities, right, we are going to find out which node, demand node, can be covered. So let's start with A. So I'm here in A, right, and I'm asking myself, what well, if I look at the radius, which node falls within, within that radius? So one, of course, so then we put a one, okay? How about two, where is two? Two is over there, so two is outside, so then we'll put a zero, okay? Then here you have three, that's in. Okay, how about four, four is in. How about five, five is in. How about six, six is in, okay? How about seven, where is seven? Seven is outside, so zero. How about eight, eight is inside, okay, one. And then I believe that all of the other ones are zero. Okay, next one. B, facility B here, more in the center. Which one are part of it? So I can actually just see, right, and say eight and nine only, right? Eight and nine only, and all the others are zero. Okay, so 
Okay, and uh, finally, C covers 11 and 12, and all of the others are zero. There are a couple of interesting things here that can be seen, for instance, from this matrix. Um, for instance, we can see that uh, node 13 can never be covered, right? And 10 can never be covered, and 7 can never be covered as well, right? Um, so not, not much uh, we can do about these guys. We can also make a sum here, right? 1, 0, okay, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now there is one tool that's interesting and that's node 8. And you see indeed that node 8 can be served by both A and by B. So that is the concept of the coverage matrix that we will use um, later on for these models, as you will see.